Hey, what's up, nerds? Welcome to another weekly Math Hammer. This week, we are pitting Plague Bearers against the Blight Kings. So, um, these are your two main battle line options for Nurgle. Um, there are some other things out there that can be battle line. You can use some Slaves to Darkness stuff. Uh, there are some Tamurkin options. Uh, you can also use Puscoils if your uh, general is the Lord of Afflictions. But these are your two main choices. The, the, the main go-tos out of the Maggotkin book. Um, and they're very convenient to compare. Why are they so convenient to compare? Um, it's because the points can work out to be exactly the same, so we can do some really easy math. So, Blight Kings are 5 for 160, or 320 points for 10, and a unit of 30 Plague Bearers with your Horde discount is also 320 points. So we can make a really nice, easy apples-to-apples -apples comparison here of um, the quality of... Blight Kings versus the quality of Plague Bearers without having to do all of that extra math of adjusting your values for how many points they are. So, part of the thing to note here is that Blight Kings are not often fielded in tens. Um, usually, I see people run like one, maybe two. Actually, let me rephrase that. Maybe one unit of 10, rarely occasionally see two units of 10. Uh, but plague bearers are like all the time in 30s. Um, so it might not be like a perfect comparison, but it makes the math easier. So that's what I'm going to go with. Um, and the scaling up in size of a Blight King unit doesn't really change any of its math. Uh, slight change to the defensive side, but it is really negligible so it's not really worth talking about um the other interesting thing to note here is that because the, you get the horde discount uh for the 30 plague bearers um examining them at 320 points is like their optimal level of point efficiency and taking them in smaller groups is definitely uh not as good um and Spoiler alert, Blight Kings are way, way better than Plague Bearers. And the fact that they get a Horde discount, and with the Horde discount, they're still not as good, should set off alarm bells for most people. So on offense, I'm not going to go in-depth on the offense of Blight Kings. Um, I did a whole previous video going in-depth on how I came up with these numbers for Blight Kings. Um, needless to say, a unit of 10 of them is going to throw 30 attacks. It's going to average about 22 wounds. Plague Bearers get 31 attacks. They average about 10 wounds. Um, so you can see already on the outset, like, your it, Blight Kings, without buffs, are literally more than twice as powerful offensively than Plague Bearers are. Plague Bearers, like, might as well be carrying pillows. Um, some of them are carrying severed heads, and I really question whether or not they are attempting to hit people with those severed heads instead of their swords, but that is besides the case. Um... So, buffing the offense, your Blight Sis can give them Rend and Ignoring Cover, and the Lord of Plagues lets you reroll ones to hit, um, which is actually significantly better because you have that uh, sixes do d6 uh, hits on the Blight Kings. Uh, Spoil, po Spoil Pox Scrivener, if I can speak properly, uh, does the same ability to Plague Bearers, but they don't do anything special on sixes. Um... And a Great Unclean one can add one to the attacks characteristic of the Plague Bearers, which effectively doubles their uh, damage. Um, but even with that, like, you know, maxing out your buffs on Plague Bearers gets you about to the same level of Blight King's baseline. And then Blight King's can get extra buffs on top of that. So... 
they're really not, you're not taking plague bearers for offense at all. In fact, most people take them for defense uh, because of their defensive capabilities. And I can certainly understand why when you look at initially. Um, so Blight Kings, a unit of 10 will have 41 wounds uh, with a 4-up save. They don't have any natural ward save. And in your hero phase, you roll a d6. On a 6, they heal d3. Uh, Plague Bearers, a lot more complicated on the math, so we kind of have to um, split up our math and look at multiple things here. So their base is 30 wounds, a 5-up save, and then 5-up Disgusting Resilience, which gives you a 56% save, so slightly better than 50%. Um, if you have 20 or more models in the unit, it is minus one to hit them in melee, which is variable in power, depending on how good your opponent's unit attacking them is. Um, they're always minus one to hit in shooting and minus two to hit in shooting if there's 20 or more models in the unit. So they're very resilient to shooting. Um, they have that natural built-in disgusting resilience that gives them protection from uh, mortal wounds, which uh, is hard to quantify here, um, but uh, it also uh, has like a damage smoothing effect for uh, those attacks that do multi-damage, uh, since you first save, your normal save is against the number of wounds, and then it multiplies times the damage characteristic, and then you do the Dis disgusting resilience save um they, they also have a sort of built-in healing if they roll a battle shock test of one they return d6 models to the unit um and then if there's a nearby demon hero uh within seven inches of them they can re-roll their ones to save uh i've talked before about how negligible re-rolling ones for anything is um, and how it has, like, this inverse power effect on weaker things. So, re-rolling ones to save on a five to save is really not that good. Um, so, it, your overall saving is uh, comparable between the two, but you've got more wounds on the Blight Kings. Um, they both have the ability to... Uh, do some manner of healing. Plague Bearers, you can only heal uh, when you lose models, but you can do it on your opponent's turn as well as your own, and the Blight Kings can possibly heal uh, in your own hero phase, but if you have all of the models in the unit at full strength, then you don't have anything to heal. So, both of these can be kind of hit or miss. Um... One's on a six, one's on a one. You have the same odds of them happening uh, when the effect is triggered. Um, that said, I, I, it's very situational as to how often these things are actually going to happen. All right. So additional defense breakdown on the Plague Bearers. So, minus one to hit in melee, I just looked at four up to hit and three up to hit, because those are your two most common things that you're going to see on units um, that you're actually going to play against commonly. Some stuff is going to hit on fives, but, like, it's just not going to be that common that you're going to play, like, a serious list that is hitting on fives with anything in melee. So... Versus a 4-up, you're decreasing your net damage by 33%. And versus a 3-up, you're decreasing damage by 25%. So with your saves, uh, against a 4-up, you're saving two-thirds of uh, you know, the potential, total potential damage. And with a 3-up, it's 75%. Um... Something actually seems like it might be messed up in this math. But, anyway. Um, 
moving along real quick. Um, so your defensive buffs adding to this, the Blight Kings can have the Harbinger of Decay, which adds an additional five up ward save, which increases their overall uh, save to 66.666%. Um, there are other healing abilities that float around as well because they're multi-wound models. Uh, and the Plague Bearers uh, have the Tally Band, which lets you return models in your hero phase. Um, I believe it's a D3 each hero phase come back. Um, so I think overall, in terms of adding outside things to your defense, uh, Blight Kings have a lot more that can be added to them. Uh, whereas the Plague Bearers are just sort of strong defensively on their own. So if we looked at like the total buffed damage absorption, uh, your Blight Kings, they're going to theoretically absorb like 123 damage before they're actually killed. Um, Plague Bearers, it depends on what's actually attacking them, but best case scenario, it's about the same as a unit of Blight Kings, which I think a lot of people would be really surprised at because you'd think that with all of the defensive shenanigans that you can do with Plague Bearers, that they would be way better defensively. And just because of the sheer quantity of wounds that the Blight Kings can have, um, they can just absorb a lot more. They can just take a lot more hits. Um, and in my math here, I just didn't include the reroll ones to save because that was just going to make my math way more complicated than it already was. And I think there may have been an error in a previous slide. Um, I apologize now. Somebody feel free to correct me in the comments. Um, my brain is just not totally on right now to go back and fix that. I just want to get through this. Um, we're just going to plow right along. So other factors that we have here. Uh, your Blight Kings, their power really doesn't change with their quantity. Um, and single models are on a larger base. They're on 40 millimeters versus the Plague Bearers that are on 32 millimeters. Now, it's important to note when we're looking at our base size and reach math that your Plague Bearers being on 32 millimeter bases, that's not enough to get in a second rank with their one inch reach on their melee weapons. So looking at their offensive power, you know, we're looking at like this theoretical maximum of being able to get all 30 of those Plague Bearers into combat when that's actually not going to happen that often. So, your Blight Kings, however, 10 Blight Kings is a lot easier to get them all into combat. Very frequently, I still get a couple that are left out uh, after pile-in. But, um, you know, you just pull those first when uh, things start dying. Um, so, Plague Bearers, their power goes down when their unit size cracks below 20. Um, and that's a big deal. Um... And that can, you know, fluctuate up and down with the other abilities that can add units back to the model. Um, their overall size in a unit of 30 is a much larger footprint than a unit of 10 Blight Kings. Uh, and much, much larger than the likely unit of 5 Blight Kings that you're probably going to be running. Um, their one... Well, I would say two positive points for Plague Bearers. Uh, they're, at minimum unit size, they're 120 points for 10, which is cheaper than the 160 points for 5 for Blight Kings. So if the game plan you're going for is min-maxing, just getting minimum points invested in Battle Line, just run three units of 10 Plague Bearers. Um, I don't think that is really a good idea, but if that's what you're going for, Go for it. Um, the other weird thing is that they're theoretically a better target, potentially, for Blades of Putrefaction. So, that is the spell out of the Rotbringers um, book, uh, Spell Lore. 
uh, it goes off on a 7, and the unit it targets uh, does a mortal wound uh, on hits of 6. So, theoretically, with a great unclean 1 buff, these guys, a unit of 30 is throwing 61 attacks versus a unit of 10 Blight Kings is throwing 30 attacks. So the big unit of Plague Bearers, if you can get all of your guys into combat, is a better target for Blades of Putrefaction. Um, I will throw asterisks after this again, saying you're not going to necessarily actually get that many into combat. So you have to think about how many of my Plague Bearers are actually going to get into combat versus Blight Kings, and I, you know how many, which one is going to actually be throwing more attacks, and second, why am I re using a strategy that revolves around a spell going off on a seven? That's a bad idea. Previous videos on that as well. Uh, go check that out back in uh, my archives. Uh, yeah, don't rely on spells that go off on 7. Uh, Blades of Petrifaction is a decent spell. It's just like... It's just like a win more. It's not really like... A thing that you need to be doing. Um, and it's not really a thing that you need to rely on. I think maybe it needs its like own video in its entirety. Um because it comes up a lot in discussion and a lot of people seem to just love blades of putrefaction and admittedly i if i take a rotbringer sorcerer or uh festus um usually that's the spell out of the rotbringer lore that i take i don't think i've ever actually cast it though it's like i take it out of obligation i take whatever wizard for whatever other purposes it's there for it's not really there to cast Blades of Putrefaction if it the corner case comes up, or if I have an extra spell to cast, uh, I'll do it, but I don't think I've ever actually... I might have attempted to cast Blades of Putrefaction a couple of times and never actually had it gone off. I think that may be uh, what's actually happened, is that I've just never even gotten the spell off and only attempted it on a couple of occasions. So, summary. Uh, your Blight Kings, generally much stronger on offense. Plague Bearers, optimistically, can be roughly on par to Blight Kings when they're buffed up. I didn't even go through, like, the, like, the adjustment that you have to do. Like, the optimal damage absorption of Plague Bearers is only for, like, that first... 10 models and then after that it drops off because you no longer get that buff so it's kind of like theoretically hitting like a unit in one round of combat with enough stuff to totally wipe the unit um plague bearers are theoretically a potentially better blades of putrefaction target um they're your better choice if you're going minimum battle line um but basically, unless you're min-maxing your battle line, Blight Kings are your better choice and better thing to be building your Nurgle list around uh, than the Plague Bearers. Um, but wait, there's more! So Plague Bearers can be summoned, so let's not write them off entirely. In fact, I definitely have not, and I need to uh, paint up a few more myself. Um, and I think spamming summoning of plague bearers is actually really good uh blight kings tend toward a very low model count army you're going to be typically looking at like um if you're running like a blight cis list i could in a blight cis list with a great unclean one you're probably going to run like 30 models um that's not a lot <laughs> So, you're going to need to make some adjustments. And one of the things, previously, I was running, you know, Plague Touch Warband previously uh, with a lo load of Blight Kings. And the problem that that list always had was, how do you hold objectives? 
because your Blight Kings end up being your Hammer and your Anvil and what sits on the objectives. And you end up having these things that you really want to go send across the board and kill things uh, sitting back on objectives. And the ability to just summon Plague Bearers to sit on objectives for you I think is going to be a huge boost. It frees up more of your Blight Kings to go kill things. So... Plague Bearers, I think, are still going to be an essential part of the Nurgle strategy, even though I don't think they're a thing that you really want to put in your list. They are definitely high value because they're the thing that you can summon in quantities. Um, so that's about all I got for you guys right now. Um, I know uh, a lot of... People had mentioned previously that they really liked uh, when I did, you know, the this not that sort of comparison with uh, the Dracoths, and I think I've done some other similar things. So definitely um, leave some comments down below if you guys what you guys thought. If you want to see more like this, um, this is the big thing that I really use Math Hammer for a lot. Is this not that? You know, making a choice within an army which thing is better. I think, without question, Blight Kings are the thing to be running in Nurgle. And I think they are going to continue to be. Um, they were before. They are the... Blight Kings are the same great units at the same great low prices that they have been ever since the Magikin book came out. Um, and I think... Um, being able to summon Plague Bearers just, like, made up all of the deficiencies of a Blight King heavy list. So, that's it, folks. I will talk to you all later.